Hey, it's Dry Miller here, and I'm going to be starting a video series on how to build your own scratch build plane. And scratch building is basically where you take some PDF plans that you've downloaded and printed out online. That's going to be your pattern or blueprint for your plane. Then you're going to need to get some $3 foam sheets, and that's going to be your building material. Then you're also going to need to get some electronics like your motor, battery, and speed control. And all you need to do is trace around the plans, cut out your foam pieces, and glue your plane together. Now obviously there's a few more steps involved in that, and that's what I'm going to be covering in this video series. I'm going to cover everything from how to download and print out your plans, all the way to flying your plane for the first time after we're done with the entire build. But in this video, I'm just going to be covering the electronics, hardware, and building material you're going to need to get started. Now, there's a wide variety of PDF plans available to download, and you can build anything from this Russian stealth fighter all the way to this hydroplane, which can land on snow, grass, water, and of course even fly. But I wanted to choose a plane that's great for beginners, easy to build, and fly, because this video is aimed for all the people out there who haven't built their first plane yet and want to get into scratch building. So I chose a plane designed by RC Powers, and I'll post a link below the video to rcpowers.com, which, by the way, are the people that designed this plane and the hydro plane. And they also have a, a large variety of planes besides these planes there. And the plane I chose was the F-22 version 2, because it's probably their most popular and stable plane that they have available. And if you're a beginner, I would highly recommend uh, building that plane if you're building it for the first time. And again, time. in my next video is where I'm going to be covering how to get those plans download and print them out, start cutting out your foam pieces. But in this video, I'm just going to be covering all the parts and hardware that you're going to need to start building. Alright, so let's get started. Now the first thing in our um, building material list is going to be the foam. Now I know this stuff looks simple, but you can actually make some pretty nice looking planes like you saw earlier, just by using thin quarter inch sheets of foam. Now I have three of the most popular types of foam used in scratch building. But the first one we're going to talk about is called fan fold. Now it's called fan fold because the way it folds out like a fan and it basically unfolds into a giant sheet of foam and is normally used as you know, insulation foam. So any place that sells insulation foam should have some type of fan fold. Now fan fold is made by a variety of brands and comes in a variety of colors and there's virtually no difference between them except you want to make sure that you get the stuff that's a quarter inch thick. And that should work for most of your PDF plan planes that you're going to be downloading in the future. Um, and it's about $3 a sheet on average, um, and it comes as one bundle, and so you're going to have to cut out the individual sheets once you start building your plane. And like I said, it comes in a variety of colors. I think you can get it in blue, white, pink, and green like I have here, and maybe a few other colors. So if you're a beginner, I would recommend using fan fold for your first plane because it's cheap and it's also more durable than some other types of foam. Okay, now I'm going to be talking about what's known as Dollar Tree foam board. Now you can obviously get this at your Dollar Tree store, and this is definitely the cheapest foam that they can use to build planes, and it's only about a dollar a sheet. Uh, so you're going to be looking at maybe three dollars for an entire plane, which is pretty cheap. But the downside is it's covered in paper on both sides, so that adds a bunch of weight, and if it gets wet or damp even slightly, your plane's going to get heavy and uh, break really easy. So as long as you have dry weather, Dollar Tree will work, and it's definitely the cheapest foam to use. Okay, now I'm going to be talking about Depron. Depron is one of the most highest quality foams available for scratch building, and this is actually what I'm going to be using in the build video, just for demonstration purposes, and I'm going to have a really nice plane for the video. And Depron is definitely a lot lighter and just a higher quality than Fanfold or Dollar Tree, um, but the downside is that you're going to have to order it online. It's about twice as expensive or more, and um, if you're a beginner, I wouldn't recommend using it because it actually breaks easier than Fanfold or Dollar Tree, and since you're probably going to crash your first plane anyway, um, I'd recommend going as cheap as possible, and if you're going to use Depron, um, wait till a future build. All right, now we're going to be talking about all the electronics you're going to need in order to get your plane in the air. Now you're going to need your motor to power it, and obviously your battery to power the motor. 
and a charger to charge your battery. And if they control your plane, you're going to need a radio, receiver, and servos. And I'm going to be covering all those individually in detail. So let's get started. All right. Now I'm going to be talking about your radio. Now this is obviously what controls your plane. So it's probably your most important electronic they're going to need in order to get started. Now there's a wide variety of radios out there and you can get anything from a $20 radio all the way up to maybe a $2,000 radio. But if you're a beginner I'd recommend just getting a cheap radio from a place like Hobby King and that's going to work <coughs> just to start off. And later when you make some complicated builds that need some extra channels and features like that then you might want to get um, a little bit higher quality radio. Now you're obviously going to need something that receives the signal from your radio and that's going to be your receiver and that basically tells your plane which way to turn when you put input on the sticks and we'll get to that later but just make sure you get a four channel radio at least and then that's going to be the first of the electronics okay now I'm going to be talking about your power system now your power system is your motor, battery, and speed control and that's what's going to power your plane now first off your motor is obviously what's going to make your plane go forward and that's what your propeller is going to attach to and that's going to blow the air in order to propel your plane forward. Now, I'm not going to cover what type of motor or where to get your motor in this video. Um, I'm just so because if you want to get information on all that you're going to have to go to rcpowers.com and they have tons of information um, on where to get your motors, what type of motors and all that and I'm not going to be covering um, all that in my build videos. I'm just going to be covering all the, all the electronics that you're going to have to get. Okay, now, your battery. And your battery is obviously what powers your motor and, uh, and all the um, other electronics that you're going to have on your plane. And also, you can't just get any battery um, for any plane because obviously bigger planes need bigger batteries. And um, also, that information is available at rcpowers.com. Your speed control is basically what controls the speed of your motor, and that's going to plug into your motor, your battery. I mean, yeah, and so it's going to alternate the power coming from your um, uh, controller, uh, and it's going to tell how much power to give to your motor and the rest of the electronics, depending on how, how much <coughs> throttle or input you're going to be giving on your controller. As you can see, I have a few speed controllers, a few different types of batteries, and a few different types of motors. And and if you go on rcpowers.com, again, they'll have all this information. But you can use a variety of sizes of motors for the plane we're going to be building. And obviously, the bigger ones have more power than the smaller ones. So okay, now we're going to be talking about servos. Now these are what are going to move your flaps and control surfaces, and that's what's uh, going to determine which way your plane is going to turn going to determine wh whether your plane is going to pitch up and down or left and right. Um, now there's a variety of servos as well, um, but to start off you might just want to get some 9 grams because those are most popular and obviously they weigh 9 grams and they're just referred to as 9 gram servos. Now also there's some servo accessories like servo re reversers and mixers and Y splitters and, and ex servo extensions. And you don't need those exactly, but sometimes when you're trying to plug in your servo into your receiver, for example, which we'll be covering later, it, your servo might not quite reach, so that's when a servo extension comes in handy. So you can just plug it right in, and it's like an extension. Now we're going to be talking about your charger. Now obviously this is what charges up your battery. And I have two different chargers here. Now this is more like a five or ten dollar charger, and this is a more like a forty dollar charger. Now both of them work. This thing just has way more features. You're able to adjust the input of the charge rate and how, what types of battery you're using and all that. But if you're just getting started, I'd recommend just getting a cheap charger like this, maybe for your first um, few planes or whatever. And then probably later you're going to want to get a, bit, um, a higher quality charger. And basically just plug into there, and then you have. Just some simple lights that tell you how much it's charging. Where on this thing, you have some buttons, and obviously you can charge faster, and things like that. Okay, now here's a few more things that you're probably going to need, and this, these are things that you don't have, and you're probably going to have to get. And th these aren't electronics, but they're definitely things. They're kind of like accessories that you're going to have to have. Okay, now 
you're also going to need a motor mount. And this is what mounts your motor onto your plane. And you can't just glue your motor right onto your plane, so you're going to need some kind of wooden thing uh, to screw your motor into. Now, you're going to have to make one by yourself, or you can buy one. And I just like to make them because it's a little bit cheaper, and so I don't have to wait for one to come that I ordered. I'm going to post some plans um, that you can download, and that's going to give you your pattern for your motor mount. Then you can cut it out using probably one eighth to maybe one half inch plywood. You're also going to need some screws, and most motors don't come with some mounting screws because most people have a custom motor mount. But these are about a little over a millimeter thick and about a quarter inch long, and it, and anything around there should work. Just something they use to screw your motor in, onto your motor mount, but they the but they have to be pretty small in order to work. Okay. Now we're going to be talking about your Velcro, and that's what's going to um, stick your battery onto your plane along with the other electronics. Now I'd recommend getting some good industrial strength Velcro from Amazon or something like that, and that's basically just going to um, stick onto your plane and then stick onto your battery, and that's what's going to hold your battery on your plane. Now, what you're basically going to do is take a piece of Velcro that you cut out early, earlier, and you're going to want to peel the plastic off, and then you're going to place that onto your battery, like so. Same with all your other electronics, like your, like your speed control and your receiver. Now, one thing with propellers, you also can't just use any propeller, and what you want to look for is at least a 6x4 propeller and you can use a variety like a 6x5 or a, or a 5x4 um, for example maybe but generally you want to use a 6x4 for the type of planes we're going to be building and you can get a bunch of different brands as well but probably the best would be an APC 6x4 that's going to give you the um, probably the best performance but any type of brand a propeller should work as long as it's a 6x4 Okay, push rods and clevises. Now, these things are what are going to attach onto your servos, to your servo arms. That's what's going to control your plane and tell it which way to go. And we're going to get to that, and I'm going to show you how to do that later. Um, but basically, you're going to have to get a few of these. And obviously, you can find out where to get these on rcpowers.com again. And, there, and most push rods come with a clevis. And that's the thing ba that basically clips on to your control surface, which we're going to show you later. And if it doesn't come with one, you're going to have to get them separately. Just make sure they're the right size to fit your push rod. Okay, now this is also a very important thing. And these are your carbon fiber tubes. The carbon fiber is basically what you're going to install in the wing or tail of your plane. And that's going to give your wing some strength because just foam in itself tends to bend and flex a lot when you're flying. And you're going to need some 3 millimeter carbon tubes in order to strengthen your wings up and, and again that's going to be available on rcpowers.com and as you can see it's hollow in the middle and it's probably about two feet long and you're going to need to get some carbon fiber okay now we're going to be talking about the hardware that you're going to need to put your plane together and you probably um, already have most of the things listed here but I'm just going to go over them really fast and show them uh, one by one first thing is your glue and that's what you're going to use to glue your plane together and the most popular is hot glue because it's cheap and it dries really fast and if you're a beginner I'd recommend just using hot glue to, for your entire build. Now you can also use five minute epoxy and epoxy is actually lighter and stronger than hot glue but it's more expensive and it's harder to deal with so if you're a beginner just use um, hot glue to start with. Okay. You're going to need some type of knife. Now, this is what you're going to use to cut out all your foam parts um, in our later video. Uh, and you can't just use any knife, like a kitchen knife or a pocket knife. You're going to have to use something like a utility knife or a exacto knife, and any of those should work. Okay, you're going to need um, a small Phillips screwdriver and probably just one screwdriver for all your um, basic uh, things that you're going to be doing while you're building your plane is all you need. Um, and I, as you can see, I have a variety of screwdrivers here. They're all Phillips, and they're all pretty small. And most of these actually, and basically all of these actually work for a lot for things like screwing your motor in and installing control rods and control horns onto your servos. So 
Um, as long as it's about maybe a millimeter wide, the head of the screwdriver, then it should work. You're also going to need a pair of wire cutters and needle nose pliers. And we won't be using this to one of my later videos, but you, want, you might want to get them right now, so you just, just you have them and um, available for use. Okay, you're going to need some basic household thumbtacks. That's what you use to um, tack your um, plans onto your foam. And, that's, and we're going to be covering that as well in the next video. And you're also going to need a basic pen to trace around your plans. You're going to need a ruler or at best a yardstick. That's what you're going to use to make nice and straight cuts with your knife once you're cutting out um, your foam pieces. And you're also going to need some tape. And you can use regular clear packing tape. And you can't really use the household scotch tape that you normally have. And the best tape to use is actually um, the strapping tape with fiberglass reinforced strands through it. And that works good for making control surfaces, hinges, and just for generally taping your plane together when a glue joint doesn't ho hold good. Okay, last but not least is rare earth magnets. Now you're going to need some really tiny rare earth magnets, and that's what we're going to be using to hold your battery hatches closed on your plane while you're flying. Now, you can probably find this, these at your craft store, or at a hobby site online, or someplace like Amazon. Now, they're basically just tiny little magnets, um, and they, they're pretty strong just because they're rare earth, and you'll definitely need some of these.